This week, Mark redirects the crew onto a 1969 Super B, whose owner is eager for its delivery. And work doesn't stop on our 1970 Cuda or our 1971 Cuda convertible. So recently, our 1969 and a half Dodge Super B, A12, 446-pack, four-speed, 410 Dana, F6 green, got its final paint job from our old friend Will. But I want to take time, because Alyssa's working in the QC department now, I want to show her just things to look for. But it's just the little minute things that if you don't fix them now, or if they exist and you let it slip out, that's where you have problems at. There are things on the engine that are already on there that are unique just to that engine, just to that year. So it's just more reaffirming with her. I'm hoping that kind of uh, passion might rub off on Alyssa as we spend more time working on the drivetrain. We want to run that brand new engine for at least 15 minutes, break in the camshaft, number one. Two, look for anything that can happen, Murphy's Law, which is typically water leaks or an oil leak. You could have a rear main seal leak, an oil pan leak, and the cam plug leaking. That's the time to fix it. I think just to be safe, I want to put it on the engine run stand, warm it up, give it its 15 to 20 minutes, look for any problems before we go to the next step of installing that drivetrain. This is all in the spirit of QCing a car from the minute it gets here to the minute it leaves. So right now you're looking at a car that looks beautiful. Just came out of the paint shop, theoretically. Should be perfect. No, there's no such thing as perfect. Oh. But I see that you've been around Dougie a lot. Dougie likes to finish people's sentences. What I was well, just saying. Just hurry up and get there. I'm not slow like what do you the want? other people. Okay, quality. Cut, roll credits. Well, no. <laughs> see, there's something in between there. There's yeah. something in between there. That's you what I'm the, trying you to do teach this you. thing, though, where you slow down when you think people are dumb. That's okay. why I think we, we're, yeah. Okay. So what do you think the point of this QC lesson is? I, it sounds like you already know, so I'd just like to know what your interpretation of so it is. So I'm guessing that we're going to go around and we're going to check gaps. We're going to check to make sure each panel is the same color. And I have no doubts that all that will be, so. Oh, well, then we good. don't even need to look at it. Well, no, we still need to look at it. Look at what has happened. See, you and your past. brother, Will, both have that same problem. You guys just assume that everybody's blind and won't see anything. Well, from now on, we're seeing everything. Okay, Alyssa asked me to round up the 446-pack engine for a Super B. It took me a while to find it. It's been stored away for a while. She asked me to put it on the run stand, fire it up, make sure it's ready to go in the car. So let's crank her over a little bit and see if she's going to fire it all. I think we have everything taken care of, so... At this point, I'm really hopeful. <laughs> okay, let's try it. So, switch on and starter. Here we go. Okay, maybe just a little more fuel. All right. Okay, cross your fingers. Not yet. My personal management skills, I don't follow the rules. Edit this! <laughs> I don't conform. So I can't say, why don't you come over here and <clears throat> look at my rooster? No, <laughs> no, no. All right, you're not going to take and I'm, I'm a square peg. You're not going to put me in a round hole, okay? I do things my way. Yes, I believe that it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. Now, you might disagree with that at home. That's fine. You do things your way. But I've also built a business to where it's at right now as a ninth grade dropout from Springfield, Oregon. So that's my management skill. Are there going to be some bumps and bruises and some casualties along the way? Yeah. All right. Nobody ever said it was going to be easy. I believe it was ACDC who said it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll.
So the purpose of this is I don't want my assembly tech to start putting side markers, Willoughby moldings, body side moldings, door handles, windows, glass, engine transmission, front bumper, rear bumper, tail lights, grill. I don't want the car put together when I can stand right here and decide if it needs to be repainted or fixed or more cutting and buffing. When it's on one of these Whirly Jig rotisseries, it means it probably has a sag in the middle. Very slight one. We know what it is. We compensate for it when we do our panels. But right now, if you look and you see here, they're a little bit wider on this gap and a little narrower up here. The same thing here. A little wider, a little narrower. When this car goes down onto a suspension, that opens back up and you'll have symmetrical gaps. You won't see it much on dark colored cars. You won't see it at all on a solid car. But your light blue metallics, your golds, your greens, your silvers, there's a phenomenon referred to as flop. Okay. What it means is, if Will painted this car in one sweeping motion, he walked all the way down the side, all the way back, all the way down, all the way back doing his coverage. Or if he sprayed this panel, he has to kick some of that paint onto this panel. So he makes that motion like that, and then he kicks some paint on there. When he comes back, kicks some paint on there. Kick some paint. Then, when he's painting this panel, it's the reverse. He starts way back here, focuses on it, kicks the paint. Sprays it that direction, starts focusing through here, kicks it back. Same thing on the quarter panel. When he starts to spray this quarter, he's down here, he makes a pass, kicks it onto that door. Sprays it all the way up into here, and then focuses. Back down here, kick it out. That way this panel, this panel, and this panel have a consistent base coat all the way down the side. Whether it was a metallic or a solid color, it was still an enamel paint single stage. That was before clear coat came out. So if you look at an original factory, like a Plum Crazy that's a metallic color, you'll see what they call modeling, M-O-T-T, model. And it's where the metals have kind of flown together out of the pattern. And so it has almost a zebra stripe look. It's subtle, and they did a lot better job at it back in those days than we would do today if we had to be forced to spray a single stage metallic. Today we have the benefit of base coat, clear coat paint. So ours is a PPG paint system. When you spray that base coat on that F6 green car out there, it's as flat as a pancake. It is dull, there is no shine to it. It doesn't have the ability to withstand the sunshine. If you pulled that car outside in June, by July it'd be all off of the car. You have to top coat the base coat. So yeah, that's why our paint jobs tend to look about a thousand times better than the factory ones. They're more consistent, they hold up better, and they have a better shine. Hi everybody, Mark Graveyard Cars along with Cousin Dougie. Cousin Dougie, that's right. If you know the answer, just shoot it right I got out one. There. You got one right. <laughs> We're here to answer your question for our fan of the week. Mr. Scott Nelson writes in, sounds more like he's, I'm being put up to this, but it's okay. We got nothing to hide here. Whatever happened to the 1968 Dodge Charger six cylinder car, the slant six car? Thank you for asking. That car right now is in our metal shop. It is getting a new floor, quarter panels, wheelhouses, rear body panel and rear cross member in it. Then it'll go over to the mudroom, get smoothed out, and then over to assembly after Will's done painting it. The engine and the transmission, they're done and ready to be final assembled. Ended up having a cracked block, but we managed to fix the cracked block. So there's your answer on what's happening with that car. Thanks for, uh, thanks for asking, Pete, I mean, Scott. See, I did that because Pete's the owner. He probably put Scott up to it. Dang. Anything you want to say, Dougie, before we sign off? Just look into that camera right there into the TV land. Yeah. That one right there? Yeah. Say goodbye, TV land. Goodbye, TV land. Bye, everybody. <laughs>
First thing that happened is uh, we found out we had two different size fuel lines, one from the engine to the remote fuel tank. So when we initially tried to start cranking the engine over, we had a nice fuel leak. So. And then there were some on the carburetors also that apparently didn't get completely tightened down. So we, we took care of all the fuel lines, got them all tightened down. Just kept cranking on it and eventually it leaned out and fired right up and ran good. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it feels really good to hear that engine run. Yeah, feels good. That, that engine sounds so good. 446 packs are an awesome engine. Okay, well, she runs. <laughs> runs good, too. Well, to me, the coolest thing about the 446 pack engine is, for Chrysler, this was the first time they used three two barrels. General Motors had done it in their Corvettes. Ford had done it a little bit earlier, too, but this was the first time Chrysler had done it. And they used Nettlebrock aluminum intake in 69. Actually, some of those intakes were still used in 70 as a rolling change because they were supposed to go to a cast iron manifold made by Chrysler. but. You'll see early cars, early 446 pack cars in 70 still had the aluminum intake, so there's a little trivia for you. Three two barrel Hollies, 1350 CFM. You've got a 500 CFM outboard at the front, 500 CFM cubic feet per minute at the back, and it runs around town on 350. So when you pull that throttle open and that vacuum drops and those secondaries pound open, 1,350 CFM. That's more than the 426 Hemi had with its dual fours. It's like Niagara Falls under the hood. How is that not just cool? Appreciate your work. That, that's that's the important part. What episode is this going in? I have no clue. Mark's gonna make us put it somewhere, so I don't know. Maybe we'll put it in this one. So, is that a roll of quarters, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> hey, Rodder, you what you doing, doll? Uh, you asked me to come down here. I want to do that, and I've been planning. Don't do it. Don't, do, Don't do the thing where you say, I can't do it. My cousin Vinny, you like it, right? I love it. You know the scene at the end? Of course. With Marissa Tomei, yep. right? Yep. yep. I want to reenact that scene. He wants to recreate large portions, or possibly the whole movie, I can't really tell, of My Cousin Vinny. That's what happens when you give free reign to the ice mans. Yeah, free reign. Vanilla um, ice, ice tray, ice biscuit, ice shavings. Are we so, I Gail's expect the that director of the show. Couldn't care less about Gail. He's not going to be a big fan of this. He's not a fan of anything. Have you seen him walk around here? He's as excited as a blind man at a strip club. Okay, I have no interest in anything he wants or doesn't want or anything else. Okay, right. Okay. I am the Ice Man. I am the Ice Man. Cuckoo Chew. That's the Walrus. The Beatles. That's Whatever. The, the I just rewrote it. Man. Okay. Imagine there's no DL. It's easy if you try. That was a John Lennon thing. That was after the Beatles. I, I, Terrible song. Right now I'm working with Alyssa on the fine points to look for on a completed paint job before it can go onto the lift and start being assembled. So you stand here and see if the door looks like any different shade than the quarter panel. No, the only thing that I see is because the light hits it so it looks like it has a highlight across the top. Uh -huh. It's really beautiful, but it looks even. Right. I mean. Stand straight on and look at it. Okay, Does look the door match the quarter? Yes. Okay. 
Take a look at your gaps here where your door, this may seem wide. I've seen these gaps all over the place. There may be a fine last minute adjustment once we put the hood on it. But this right now looks great. You'll see those bolts aren't painted mm -hmm. and they're not completely tight yet. Mm -hmm. We'll do that last minute adjustment once the hood is on there. Okay. You also on these cars have a grill support that has to go in at the same time. It goes in here between these two points and it gets painted body color. So all that's your last minute. Once it's off a whirly jig, we can start working on it. But to me, I think that all looks very adjustable. Okay. Now I have a question. For who? For you. Where okay. are the hood hinges on this one? Where they the should hood? have the hood hinges in place, right? Yeah, why, why don't they have hood I don't know why they wouldn't have the hood hinges in place if we're going to paint it like that. Because it it's got to be adjusted and painted at the same time. Are the hood hinges? They're not body color, right? Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. God. Great. So they should be back there painted in theory? Yeah. Well, yes and no. This being a 69 and a half A12 Super oh, B God. has a fiberglass lift off hood that doesn't use hood hinges. It just sits on these four hood pins. Okay, Dan. Education. So we are ready to install the drivetrain, which is completely built out and detailed. So I want to go get that from the little red rooster, cousin <laughs> Dougie. I want to get him to get the engine transmission rear end on the cart over here so we can get ready to install it. But I also want to show you a lot of the things that are on that drivetrain that make it really unique to the 69 and a half A12 six pack cars. Oh, that's awesome. So while Alyssa and I are wrapping up the QC on the paint for the Super B, Doug, cousin Dougie, cousin duct tape, I call him, is moving over the drivetrain. It's on an assembly cart already. He's gonna get it moved around over here in front of the car. There's some unique things on it I want to point out to her before we round up the troops and install the drivetrain. So on the 69 and a half cars, so they made 826 of them exactly like this. That means 446 pack. The fifth digit of the VIN is an M. Now you did your research on the A12 car, so what's the M stand for? You did I the research. That one. I forgot that one. Oh, okay, you forgot that one. That's that modified, one. yeah, special order 440. What else? Special package. No, that's not what the M means. means. It's more special. money, M for money. Not in this case. No. Tell me more about the A12. What else is so, included in an A12 car? Um, they, it's a package, so it all comes down to the broadcast of the VIN sheet, right? So it's gonna have options on there that are different than the other car. And those options are... This is the part I've been waiting for. <laughs> all the rest sounds like legal speak. What are you guaranteed with an A12 car that you wouldn't get uh, with a regular... 446 Super pack. 446 pack, that's right, that's right. That you get the big engine. And the brake horsepower rating on the 446 pack is? Does anybody even really know that? Well, I do, it's 390. Oh. Well, that's a good start, you did good. Now, what else is guaranteed part of the 69 and a half A12 Super B package? The lift off fiberglass hood. Yes, that's true. That makes it pretty cool. That's good, yes, absolutely. And what, probably a badass stripe of some kind. Yeah, badass stripe, right. Probably some pretty paint. Okay, <laughs> you didn't do your research, did you? I did. Somehow I knew this. you wouldn't. Well, Dad. Why don't you do everybody a favor here? I don't see so well. Go ahead and read that highlight of stuff right so there. Well, you got glasses on. Go ahead and read that highlight of stuff. Why do you have those? You read that. Those prescription. And I'm going to point to the pieces you, on the engine. Okay. So, A1269. Engine conversion package. 440. Engine conversion package 440. This is what this is. Three two-barrel carburetors. Three two-barrel carburetors right here, folks. Un, dos, tres. Right. How many CFM on those three carburetors? 383. Yeah. Something 1350. Like that. 500 outboards, 350 center. See, that's what's wrong. See, my generation, we have Google. Yeah. I don't well, really have to keep it. That's why your generation here. are idiots. Okay. Good talk. Hit so, me with something else. HD 11 inch drum brakes. Heavy duty 11 inch drum brakes right here, right here. A833. Is that how you say that? 833 Hemi 4 speed transmission. This is your VIN number here that tells you it's a real live numbers matching transmission. What is the vehicle identification of the last eight characters? 
9824123. That's the only one they put there. And what assembly plant is represented by the letter A? Amtrak? Michigan? Amtramic? Yeah. No, but that was a good guess. What else? See? Oh. Well, that's my only guess. Not can good. I get the answer now? Because that's the only plant you can think of, right? Yeah. Okay. Lynch Road. Okay. All A12 cars were built at Lynch Road, so all A12 ha cars will have the A as the assembly plant. Okay, another thing to show you right here, take a look along here. So here's your fuel pump. This is the a replica of the original fuel pump. So this pump, just like the rest of the engine, was painted orange, that's why it's orange. The fuel comes out of it through this line up into this hose, which is a KV hose. This is a replica of the original factory hose. Again, got it from our friends at OER. The correct clamps goes into this fuel vapor separator. So fuel goes in here, comes out the top, goes up this line and into these carburetors. This one here is a return line. It's a quarter inch and it goes all the way back to the fuel tank. And any fuel that it doesn't need coming out of this, it sends back to the tank. It's an early version of recycling. You see these numbers here? Yeah. That's the part number, that's the date code. This is a correct replica of the original fan belt from 1969. That's Incredible. the kind of detail we go into here. That's crazy. Okay, you got the correct heater hoses. You'll notice the ribs on the top of it, just mm -hmm. like the other one. That's how you know they're originals. Correct radiator hose, upper, with the part number on it. Boom, bada, bing. 26-inch maximum cooling radiator. That will be mounted into the car. It's an 054, in case you're wondering, last three digits of the part number. Thank you. I was wondering. Non-gloss black fiberglass hood panel with functional air scoop. Out in the That's body cool. shop. It's, it, it is one big air scoop and it happens to go on this air cleaner right here. He's insane. Which you'll only see this on the 69 and a half A12 cars. So you can see the holes here for the carburetors. The studs come up through this. And the way that it works, there's a drain tube port here. Oh, okay. And a drain tube port here, and another one up here, and none up here. So this trough, when it fills with water on a rainy day, which it would, will drain instead of getting the filament wet. <clears throat> the hood is made of fiberglass and it has a huge opening in the front and a scoop. The bottom of it's cut out. So that scoop lets air go into it. This seals against the bottom of the hood. So all that cold air coming in, comes right in here to this. Because cold air burns better than hot air. If you've ever been in a, in a car that performs better in the morning than it does in the late afternoon on a summer's day, it's because the air is more dense and it's cooler. So, and these are the correct decals for it. You have your special instructions, which is 69 and a half only special instructions. You should take a picture of that so you know what it looks like. And this is a do not wash your oil. Okay. Okay, what else you got? Oh my God. Talk to me, Moon Trisket. If you can remember some of that stuff, it'll be great down the road or keep this book in my back pocket, right? Yeah, but why would you want to do that when, that's the problem with the kids today, you guys just want to Google something, you want to pick it up in a book. You get dropped behind enemy lines in Vietnam and they're gonna blow your brains First out like all, in Rambo. Why you get dropped in Vietnam? Because you don't know what Ever. the alphanumeric like code is for a thermoscutcheon clutch fan. Guess what, you're in Rambo 8. Okay, okay Dad. Just another item that we're stocking now at the shop because so many people request it and it's a high moving item are the Kreger wheels. Of course, I grew up on them. I, it's not hard to convince me to have to stock something I love that much. So I've asked them to go out there and to get me two 15 by eight and two 15 by seven wheels. So we're putting the uh, BF Goodrich TA radials on it because that's what it had back in the day and the 15, eight and 15, seven rims. It's gonna look beautiful. We have our second skin, which is a sound, heat, and uh, vibration dampener. A lot of these cars, I mean, from the factory, factory, they didn't come with this type of stuff, but this customer uh, elected to have this in the car, so, all right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start laying this stuff in. I might go up here a little bit. Not too far, though. Get all the contours. So what I'll probably do is overlap these just slightly. I don't want a big gap in between. Then when you get to a spot like this where your seat track uh, goes through the floor, just mark where your hole is. Use a screwdriver or something, poke it through. And then when you got these little contours right here, what I like to do is just take my razor blade, cut it, 
lay that over. Usually what I do is after I get all this stuff laid down, I find out where my body plugs are and I'll just cut right around those so I'm still able to access those. It's not super tricky to do. Uh, it can be time consuming, um, but I've done a few of the cars. So you kind of get the hang of it every, each time. One thing that I do like about this stuff uh, compared to some of the other brands out there is you don't got that super shiny in your face logos on the front. The, the logo on this is ghosted in. It's, it's super subtle and it, it, it looks really cool. Now, when I was growing up, uh, I don't honestly remember having a set of Kregers. Well, I did on a, I, I bought a, it was a 74 satellite Sebring from JL Morgan Motors. Had the right fender and the right door caved in on it. I bought it for 300 bucks, but it had these beautiful Kreger five spokes. It made the car, the car was red and white. Uh, but my Charger, I had uh, old ET style five slot mags. Guys at home know what those are. And I had Magna 500s when I first bought it. But uh, I know I've owned a few sets when I was a kid. I just don't remember all the cars they were on. Dude, what the f There is no reason for any of this. F the broom goes right there, you know? It's just like, why is this part out? Like they take it all the way back up here, but they can't put it in the bin that it's supposed to be in. Trash everywhere, like, so they're like children. Hey dude. Hey buddy, what's up? Uh, so I got a new project from Mark. So I guess it, DL sort of wears his emotions on his sleeves. And so he wants to do the scene like the Marissa Tomei thing, where he, we go to like shoot in the courthouse. And um, he was not pleased not this. when I told him about this. What because does this have to do with Mopar in that show? Well, I think he's gonna rewrite the speech so that it's Mopar oriented. His primary concerns were the fact that it has absolutely nothing to do with Mopar. And honestly, it's just a time thing. I don't know, think about it, it's a challenge, right? I mean, you direct movies, you know? It's, it's kind of your wheelhouse. It's something fun to do. Why are you it's, trying to get me on board with this? I'm not doing it. I got to do color and sound. Well, yeah, he kind of wants you to be the director for this because it's kind of, you know. And Mark wants to put these things at the top of the show. We have this whole concept called bailout rate, you know? Like if somebody tunes in to watch a show about cars and they're watching this recreated scene of My Cousin Ben, I mean, they're just going to change the channel. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I had to talk with DL and he's got a plan and so that's good. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be kind of like I mentioned, pushing this back at least one more episode. And what the heck is this? Do not touch ever. What gorilla got in and tore those? Humans don't open boxes like this. Okay, ready to go. Okay, so I, look, I admit that right now my management skills are not exactly glowing in the dark. We're getting in trouble on these three cars, so I'll have to make some kind of changes. I, and I need to, that's okay. I accept that, that's how we grow. That's how we learn. If you watch through any of the any of the uh, Rocky series, you know Rocky. He was a ham and egg fighter in the original one, right? That's what he called himself. I, uh, uh, ham and egg. Uh. And he hit his left hand, but he hit hard, and he's all that, and he had a lot of heart. All right. So how this works is, if you want to set the upper control arm alignment when you're down at the alignment shop, you're going to set the caster and the camber. And the way you're going to do that, you're going to put a wrench on this right here, and when you move it, watch this control arm. See that control arm going in and out? That's how you set the alignment. The back one does the exact same thing. 
they needed to dial those skills in. And they dialed them in by the end of two, because that's when he took Apollo Creed out. Then he got all messed up with his uh, trainer, Diane Mickey. He died, he said they had more to do, but Mickey was dead. And then he had to get in the ring and he fought Clubber Lang, but he didn't have the heart and Clubber Lang knocked him out. And then he said, go for it. And then he won. And then he fought that Russian guy. And then Tommy Gunn stabbed him in the back. So I don't know. What's the question now? I like people to be kind of like a Swiss army knife to be able to do everything. Right? I mean, if something were to happen and you were to lose all your metal guys one week, maybe they all had the flu or something, or they got hurt, but you that you can't bring that department to a halt. So you could go over and get the mud guys because you've spent time with them. That's what we're doing with like the assembly guy. We're taking time for him to learn how to put the chrome and the trim and the exterior pieces on, but then shift gears immediately, go over to the book and find out where the assembly line markings go on this car. Switch gears again, go back over and find out what's the 69 and a half Super B supposed to look like, which exhausts on it. Because if we had 20 of those guys right here that were, that were well-rounded, that could do anything, we could put out 13, 14 cars a year with no trouble. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. If we had 20 guys like that, I think we could put 20 cars a year out. There's people a lot more organized than I am. They write things down when I should write them down. So I think I'm lacking in that area. I th it's never been something for me. I wasn't a study guy in school. I didn't like to study. I don't like to sit there and write out everything that I'm gonna be doing for the next week. So I think that <clears throat> that exposes me to the situation we're in now. Where not only are we way behind, but I don't even have good answers for people. Why, why is, I mean, I know what the answer is. We've got too much work and not enough employees. But how do you put that into words for a customer who's been waiting two or three years for a car? One thing I do is I keep my nose down to the grindstone and I don't give up. So there's that, that's the other side of Mark Warman. There's this, this side that should be doing a lot differently or better or could, but then there's the one where we'll never stop until we get there. When I have a problem with a car, if it doesn't run right, if it misses, I always take a very analytical point of view of that because I found a, a good friend of mine, Jim Zabrowski, uh, worked with him back in the 80s over at the Lincoln Mercury dealership. He had a car that wouldn't run right. He wasn't in there twisting wrenches, ordering parts or anything. He stood back with his stupid little thermos and his poisoned cup of coffee and his cigarette and he'd just look at the car and that's what he'd do. It drove me crazy. He'd stare at it and he'd smoke a cigarette and that first move he made on it was the right move. He had thought everything else out. He had ruled it out. So it is easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission, another one of my downsides. But I will stick with it and figure out what we need to change. And if it's a million things that need to be changed over the next five years, I'll make those changes. Hello folks, Mark Warman again here with Cut and Dougie. Right, Cut and Dougie? Uh-huh. Scott Gray has written in and would like to know what grit sandpaper we use for blocking. 400. Now, oh. That's not bad. That, that's the final sand before paint. That's okay, you're okay. doing fine. Doug's just here because he's handsome and he has a full head of hair unlike me. So it depends what you're blocking out. If you're doing body work, we finish all of our body work in 80 grit. 
Then it goes over to the paint shop, Will does the primer on it, comes back, and they begin with 120. Then they'll usually get to a point where they broke through all the primer and down to the mud. Then they'll move out, reprimer it, come back with 220, then 320, then 400, then it's ready to paint. I got one. Hey, you did good. 400 was the final right before paint. Yeah. Yes. That's kind of Dougie. <laughs> yeah. You want to say hi again or I'm bye learning. or anything? Yeah, hi again. Hey, it's Dougie. Yeah. <laughs> top fan of the week. If you want to be the top fan of the week, post your questions here on Facebook. We'll, we'll answer the guy who, or girl, who has the best no. <laughs> Not the no. So if you want to be the fan of the week and have your question answered, go to graveyardcars.com, post it there, or over on our Facebook page. Maybe you'll get lucky, right? Or you feel lucky, punk? Name of the movie. <laughs> and cut. <laughs>
Everybody did a great job this week. Love working with Cousin Dougie. He got the engine running on the engine run stand, and that's a, that's a great thing to know that that thing's been setting for two years since it was built, and it's perfect. So that allowed us to be able to put it in the car. The uh, wheels and tires he mounted up, just gorgeous. They balanced to zero, which is very, very important. Justin did really well on the Tribute Cuda. He got the sound deadener pads on the floor of it. I almost recommend that anymore to anything, especially a Tribute car, because it's not going to hurt the value of it, and at the same time, it really makes it a better ride, so that looks great. Uh, he also got the undercarriage markings done, all the assembly line stuff, the stuff that cool stuff, the fun stuff that's in the books. And I'm looking forward to working with Alyssa, because I'm going to bring her out and have her QC his work. Let her try the old management hat on. Also, Justin got the exterior trim and ornamentation done on our 71 Cuda convertible. That thing's starting to look beautiful. And the proudest moment for me is the fact that I was able to spend time with Alyssa, recognize that she was more passionate this time and more inquisitive this time than she's been in the past. She learned all about how a 446 pack works and what pieces make it unique. The team pulled together in a nice time crunch type of thing and got that drivetrain installed with no casualties. And now our 69 and a half 446 pack four speed Super B is a rolling car. That's a good week. So I guess if you look at my management skills, could they use a little bit of tweaking? Sure. Some people at home probably think, oh yeah, he's a lot more than that. But the fact is, look at how it worked out. Okay, that's why I'm where I'm at. You push that edge, you push people, you push them, you push harder than you've ever pushed anything in your life. And at the end of the day, one of two things is gonna happen. The guy's gonna flop dead, which is unfortunate, get him out and get some fresh meat in here, or, he rises to the occasion. So, words of wisdom. The coffee machine is in desperate need of repair. And to make matters worse, just as I'm discovering all of this, Will walks in and he wants some coffee. Oh, good. Coffee's going. Let's grab a seat. Do you, you guys get actually her... use this thing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? Do you actually use this? Uh, yeah, every morning. Like, this thing hasn't been cleaned and I mean, I haven't been down here in a couple of months, but... I have a sensing uh... attitude. Talk, talk to Aaron. Talk to me. Open up. Mark wants me to do some ridiculous My Cousin Vinny thing, which I have to try to talk DL into doing, and DL doesn't want to do it because it's ridiculous. Well, you know how DL is if he, once his mind's made up. Mark's a little bit like that, too. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. slightly. You just got to know how to handle Mark. But what if I want him to not do something? So if he says, okay, Monday we're shooting this My Cousin, My Cousin Vinny scene. Cool. Just say, okay, pacify him. No problem. In your head, you have to know when you come into work on Monday, you got to misdirect him. It's like David Copperfield. And then it gets him going in a completely opposite direction. And then before you know it, it's the end of the day and you didn't shoot it. I don't often get advice from Will, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, but yeah, I, 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 he's pretty insightful. You gave me an idea. I know. Misdirection. Right. So is the coffee good to go? No, oh, you're deep no, in it's thought. Still broken. What really stuck with me though is this idea of how to manage Mark through misdirection. I understand. You have a big job. The hug was unexpected. Hey, I have a new project for you. Pumpkin seeds? You got a squat. Ah. What are we talking?